Good morning, good morning. It is uh, 2.50 a.m. Friday morning. I'm on my way to the gym right now, bundled up. 55 degrees outside. And uh, we're making a lot of progress. We're, we're making a, you know, we're making a lot of progress. And let me explain to you what I mean by we're making a lot of progress. When we can actually understand the shortness of life, the important the importance of each and every moment, and the simplicity of change, you're making great progress. Every single thing that I have accomplished was in small, incremental, intentional steps. There was nothing big. There was nothing overwhelmingly mind-blowing different. <clears throat> Just a small, steady ascend to the top. That's it. With my faith, with my body, with my mind, with my finances, with my wife, with my kids. Slow, steady ascent. And I was thinking as I was com coming out the door, I'm locking it right now. coming out the door locking it locking it up and I'm thinking <clears throat> if you don't have an understanding about why you're here like if I think the hardest part for people to really get to where they got to go is they don't have a clear understanding why they're even here no clue And they want and they're grasping after the wrong thing. They want and they're grasping after the wrong thing. Or they're giving themselves fully into something that they ought not to. If you give, and, and please hear me on this. This isn't a scare tactic. This is the truth. If you give yourself into other things more than you give yourself into God, you cannot succeed. And something I wanted to share yesterday, and I wish I had more than two people who would watch my videos. Because I'm, I, I couldn't make up some of the stuff that I'm saying, even if I wanted to. Because you can go grab some, anybody, any Joe Schmo off the street and ask them to give you a, uh, ask them to give you a, a divine discernment about what God wants or what God is asking of us and they couldn't rub two nickels together to give you an idea about what you're supposed to be doing. Let me be very clear. You see successful rich people and I'll throw Donald Trump out there. I don't know what his I don't know what his 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 beliefs are. I just know that people don't like him. But that's not unusual when you're successful. Now, let me not use Donald Trump. Let me just say, let me just use somebody that you may know. You might say, look at such and such. They got a nice car. They got a nice house. They're living really well. They got it made. Be very clear, and I'm probably gonna shoot another video about this because this has been on my heart at least the last two days. And, and to be able to put it into words, is, is it was amazing to me because it was only a thought, but until I said something, it gave life. So let me, let me walk you through this. You see people who are wealthy, you see people who are well off, you see people who have an exterior that you envy, that you wish you could have, 
people who don't have to worry about how they're gonna pay the utility bill, how they're gonna pay the mortgage. They don't have to worry about how they're gonna put gas in their car. They don't have to worry about food. They can eat anywhere. They can sleep in any one of their five or 10 or 15 houses that they own. But you never hear them talk about God. Ooh, you never hear them talk about God. You never see them go to church. And in your mind, you're saying, if God will bless them and I'm showing up to church, why won't God bless me? And it's obedience. Oh, my God. It's obedience. I couldn't figure out what I'm saying on my own. Understand. God gives us all gifts. It's up to you on whether or not you want to be obedient to take hold of that gift. Now the word says your gift will make way for you. However, what you're not seeing is that their gift actually has more abundance than what they're having in life. They have 15 houses. They have 10 million in the bank. That's because they're obedient to their gift. They recognize that they've been given a certain talent and they're honing in on that talent and they've been rewarded for that. But what they don't know, see, you're looking at them and you see that they don't go to church. You see that they don't praise God and you see that they don't even mention the word of God. Matter of fact, they don't even get their tithes. But you see them being blessed. That's because their gift has made a way for them. But where you see abundance, I know that they are still living in lack because the true blessings of God can only be given once you give praise and thanks to him for what it is that you got. So even on them who has more, they'll be limited because of what they're not doing. What I'm saying, what I'm simply saying is that you may praise God, but at the end of the day, you're not being obedient to your gift. And you're wondering why the person who doesn't praise God but is obedient to their gift appears to be living a better life than you. No, the quality of your life is actually better because you actually know God. You're just being disobedient to the gift that he gave you. See, their quality of life is superficial. Your quality of life is spiritual, but because you're being disobedient to the gift that you've been given, you cannot get in direct line with what God has for you. So you're not seeing the abundance of wealth that you should be having, but you're looking at the other person and you're questioning your faith because that person isn't doing what you're doing in your faith life, but that person isn't doing what you're doing in their faith life. So therefore there's a lack on both sides. And when you learn to line up your faith with your gift, I'm going to leave it right there. You will start to see abundance in every realm of the world. I'm walking around my house right now, burning sage. I'm praising Jesus. I'm hallelujah throughout my house. I ain't crazy. I know who I serve. You, sh you shouldn't be in... Listen, if... If you have, <clears throat> if you know somebody <clears throat> who's in a position to give you all the wealth and riches and everything that you could possibly have or want, good health, 
riches, a happy life, prosperous life, take care of your kids, your children's children. You wouldn't care who was looking at you if you was driving down the street in a pink Lamborghini. Especially by people who are standing at the bus stop. But so many times we'll shortstop You know what we have coming to us because we care what other people think. Let me remind you when your gift and your faith and you react equally to both of them start to line up you will get in the path of God's will for you see my job in real estate is to get in the path of a transaction you have a buyer and a seller my job is to get in the middle of that directly align myself with the buyer and the seller and make a deal happen if I can't line up with the buyer or the seller or both, then I can't make a deal happen. How can you get the abundance that your life actually has for when on one hand you're being faith-based, so you understand so so your your quality of life is good, but the the fruitfulness is not there because you're not being obedient to the gift that you've been given. The gift will make way for you. The spirit is eternal life. The gift will make way for you. The spirit is eternal life. And when you start to line them both up, you start to live in an abundance that is is, is directly in proportion to what it is that you to your gift, to what you what you have coming to you. And I think that's where a lot of people fail and fall off is they think, well, I have faith. Well, that's fine, you have faith. But if you're not being obedient to your gift, your faith is even limited. Because your gift will have you doing things that you're not comfortable doing. Your gift will have you stepping out on faith and addressing certain individuals or stepping in the realm of certain areas that you're not comfortable with, that you don't feel deserving of. But because you have this gift, the gift will make way for you. But because you have a disobedient heart, at the end of the day, you won't do what you're supposed to do to take full hold of what it is that God has for you. That's a word. That's a real word. That's the truth. And when you line them up, like a sharpshooter lines up his target in his crosshairs, when you line it up, you will hit the mark every single time. When your faith and your obedience to your gift once you've identified it, line up, you will hit your target every single time. And I'll give you a, I'll give you something I'll give you something even better. It's not even a huge, dramatic, drastic change that you have to make. It's just slow, subtle ones. It's slow, subtle steps of obedience that you will go through in order to line yourself up. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. Identify your gift. Identify your weaknesses. And just work on those. 
That's it. I'm feeling pain in my, my left shoulder and I've been feeling this pain. The crazy thing is, I, since I know it's my weakness, it's the area of my body I work the most so I can strengthen it. And when you have areas of your body or you have areas of your faith or areas of your work or areas of your blessings or areas that you know you're weak in, those are the areas that you ought to strengthen. Hmm. Strengthen the areas you're weak in. Be obedient to your gift. You know what your gift is. It's the thing that you do well. It's the thing that people compliment you about. It's the thing that calls you, the thing that reaches out to you, and the thing that you feel most compelled to be or do on an excellent level. Not on a mediocre, just regular level, but on an excellent level. When you're obedient to your gift, and when you have faith in God and you praise God, you will directly line yourself up like a like a like a sharpshooter and some crosshairs, your target, and you will get in the path of what it is that God has for you. That this this is all just coming to me. This isn't I couldn't make this up if I wanted to. I couldn't. <laughs>